Chris Tran. Top 10 list. Top 10 list. Chris Tran. Good afternoon, Madam Toastmaster, Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. I'm sure most of you know who David Letterman is, and you know that over the years he has had a pretty successful run with his top ten lists, and he has covered every topic imaginable on his top ten list. But I can personally guarantee that you have never seen my top ten list on David Letterman show, or any other talk show for that matter. It is my intention to change that starting today. <laughs> the title of my top ten list is The Benefits of Being Moodless. That's right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. There are indeed benefits to being moodless, benefits that no plastic surgeon in his or her right mind will tell you about, but I will. Four years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and on December 16, 2011, I kissed my boobs Goodbye. Now that I've gotten that off my chest, <laughs> <laughs> ladies, you know how great it feels to go remove your bra when you come home from work or before you go to bed. Well, you have no idea how great it feels to go remove your boobs. <laughs> In fact, there are days when I don't bother to put mine on. 90 degrees outside, I'm not dealing with boots wet anymore. <laughs> Number nine, let's just state the obvious. No more mammograms. <laughs> Mammos to gram, but I do see my doctor once a year for a lymph node exam. Number eight, my back and shoulders are thanking me. You see if I have original factory issue or 40 inches. I'm 60 inches tall. If you were picturing a brunette version of Dolly Parton, you aren't too far off. So I'm going to keep my hair now. You might use that magic marker, Anna. <laughs> now, I've heard stories about individuals who have suffered from phantom pains from losing body parts, injury, or surgery. That's not a problem I have had. What I have experienced is phantom itching sensations. Nothing worse than having nipples that itch, and you don't have any nipples to scratch. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. Let's face it. Reconstructive surgery is very expensive. How expensive is it? Starting cost, without complications, $26,000. What your plastic surgeon will tell you is up to 50% of their patients will have complications, mostly from infections, tumor <coughs> plate rupture, and please stay away from sharp objects and cats that have not been declined. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, most insurance companies will pick up 80% of the tab. I'm not a mathematician. But I can tell you that 20% of $26,000 is a whole lot of money. <laughs> 11 weeks after I had my surgery, I was fitted with fake boobs. What we call boobs in our industry. <laughs> my cost, before my insurance kicked in, for three bras and a pair of fake boobs, $710. My out-of-pocket expense, $97.30. And now, there are advantages there. With all the money that I save from not having reconstructive surgery done, I now have a black belt in bargain hunting, a white belt in bargain hunting, a red belt in bargain hunting. <laughs> I think you got the idea. Number five, there's a lot more color in my closet now. I spent 24 years hiding my original factory issue or trying to conceal them behind the colors of black, brown, and navy blue. One month after I had my surgery done, a close friend of mine decided to take me shopping for a new wardrobe for my new and improved athletic body, <laughs> which I'd never had before. I asked Joyce, I told Joyce I needed some new workout clothes. She took one look at my closet and said, no dear sister, what you need is some color in your closet. Well, Joyce, what colors do you think I should wear? She said, Popsicle colors. <laughs> if you happen to see a middle-aged woman in the middle of a thrift store bubbling something about popsicle colors, that would be me. Number four. No more black eyes when I try to exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. While we're on the subject of exercising, I can now exercise my woman's prerogative and change my size as often as I want. 
them too. In fact, I happen to have a flat and fabulous sister named Barbara. Barbara has a boob drawer. Barbara has six different sizes in her boob drawer. She tries out a blouse that won't quite fit. She just puts on a smaller pair. <laughs> no more dieting or exercise <coughs> required. <laughs> Number two, Halloween is right around the corner and it is on the fast track to becoming my favorite holiday. Because I'm about the same size as your average middle-aged 12-year-old girl. <laughs> <laughs> For 10 years prior to my surgery, I used to dress up as a witch. Same black costume, all in black. That costume was getting old in more ways than one. In the last three years, I have gone on to dress up as a pirate, once again all in black, but hey, it doesn't like having a set of shoes when I have the operation, right? <laughs> the Red Riding Hood, and the Easter Bunny. In case you haven't noticed, I am very happy <laughs> to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and number one, I am now a lean, mean, hula hooping machine. <laughs> I have been hula hooping since I was 18 years old. And I could easily do this for an hour. But I could, yeah, I just, I could easily do this for an hour because there's nothing to get in the way. <laughs> but in the interest of time, I'm going to wrap things up. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, losing my breast was not the worst thing that ever happened to me. If I had had my funny bones surgically removed, that would have been far worse. <laughs> we'll leave you with a very inspiring quote from Nicolas Cage. And he said, and I quote, if a man or guy only wants you for your breasts, thighs, and legs, send him to KFC. <laughs> <laughs> you are a lady, not a cheap value meal. <laughs> and one more thing before I go. My dear husband of 30 years did not fall in love with my boobs. He fell in love with my potato salad. Thank you. <laughs>